there at the beginning. And he evaded. Uh, I think I take we take some credit here in Moscow for moving him off the board of directors of the League of the South. If we had not raised the issue here, I'm pretty sure that Steve Wilkins would still be on the board of the League of the South. Well, pretty sure he wouldn't be. He's got other fish to fry now. Um, the here, here's here's the here's the situation. Steve Wilkins is not as I've defined neo Confederate. Steve Wilkins is not a neo Confederate either. He's not that. Now, look, what is he doing on the board of the League of the South? Then? Uh, well, what you what you, what you have to do <laughs> is is say. If you say that the League of the South is a neo-Confederate organization because the Southern Poverty Law Center told me so, then we've got a problem of which sources we're going to believe. I've known Steve for many, many years, and everything that I just said to you about not wanting a do-over, not wanting to pick up guns, not wanting to be a revolutionary, it was You've Steve. editorialized in favor of secession. No, no, but uh, what, what do you mean? In, what do you mean in favor of secession? It's, it, it's on your website. It's... Uh, well, it's in Credenda. Uh, um, you defend the right of states seceding. Um, this is a good uh, example. This is a good example of what something I said in my opening comment about a, com uh, a complex situation. When the U.S. Constitution was ratified, when the U.S. Constitution was ratified, Virginia, New York, and Rhode Island all ratified it with a rider and a proviso that they were ratifying it on the condition that they could depart if they wanted. They could leave if they wanted. That's the right of secession. We seceded from Great Britain. That's what our war for independence was, a war of secession. Um, Georgia in the Soviet Union has accomplished a secession from the old Soviet Union. Secession is, uh, secession as an abstract political right is one thing. Urging it as a policy matter is another, right? So I, do, do I believe that the American colonies have the right to secede from Great Britain? Absolutely. Do I believe that the southern states or the northern states, the New England states that threatened secession um, in the early part of the 19th century, do I believe that they had the right constitutional right of secession? Absolutely. They had the right of secession. That's a separate question from whether it's a good idea. Is it what you want? Okay. In fact, even in, even in the Confederate Army, there were the secessionists in the Confederate Army. There were the secessionists and what were called Union men in the Confederate Army. The Union men in the Confederate Army were those who were opposed to secession they, as a policy matter. Right? They, they didn't think it was time. They didn't think it was right. But then when it was done and the vote went against them, they went with, the, they went with their state. Pol the policy matter is one thing. The, the abstract constitutional right is another. Do I think... That, um, that, that people have the right to alter or, uh, as the preamble of the Idaho Constitution says, that when the people can alter or amend or abolish their form of government whenever they feel like it? Do I believe the Idaho Constitution? You bet. Do I think it's a good idea right now as a policy matter? Absolutely not. Those are two separate questions. I'd like to sort of close out this question. We're still on this first question. Okay. Uh, just with a comment. I would not find uh, uh, call daily rape, daily bloodletting whipping, uh, frequent and constant and cons consistent breaking up of African families, a harmonious, multiracial society. And neither would I. And yet, that's your statement in the slavery book. No, no, there's a, no. You need to be careful. And this Christian is, slave owners did not whip their slaves? Come on. Let, 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 did let, not rape their slaves? I mean, let me put it this way. Oh. Let me put it this way. I'm speaking as a pastor. If, if I had been a pastor in the antebellum South, and I had been confronted with a member of my church who raped or abused any of his slaves, I would have led the charge in excommunicating such a one for professing the name of Christ while behaving that way. And... If he'd been abusing his slaves the way you described, I would not have any problem with urging the civil magistrate to execute such a person. No one has... It never happened, Doug. Uh, and it got worse during Reconstruction. You know why? You know why Your never... Presbyterian, pseudo-Presbyterian connections, you know why? those Presbyterian pastors did not raise a finger. You know what? Um, you know why it never happened? 
because I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good enough answer. Though. But I, I, I just, will now take a break. I'm just telling. I'm, I'm just telling you what my convictions are. My convictions are, without having to answer for all the sins of the world, my convictions are that no one bearing the image of God has the right to abuse or degrade anyone else, regardless of color, regardless of race, regardless of ethnicity, who also bears the image of God. There's just no right for that. Doug, I will sit down now, but okay. since you were not there, the antebellum South was not the greatest and most harmonious multiracial society in history. Right. What was? It's, that's a false statement. What was? What was? Yeah, what was the most? Since, what, was? Since, what was the most harmonious multiracial society? Oh, I don't know. But then how I, can you make the claim that you just made? You made the claim. No, you, and you said it was false. And, and I you know enough facts about the antebellum South to falsify your claim. You can only falsify it if you can produce a society that was in better shape than that. That was a multiracial ethnic society. That was more harm harmonious. I have falsified your statement. <laughs> no, I'm. By fiat. By fiat. 